Kelvin, thanks for joining us. Um, a rare blank Saturday for the men's first team coming up after a busy first month of the season. What, what have you made of the first four or five weeks? I think it's been a decent start. I think um, I think we've definitely shown that we're um, competitive uh, at this level. Um, I think uh, I think it's interesting. It's always interesting when you see you watch the games and you look at probably our first few games and with performances that we probably should have possibly won the game or got a result. And then you go to Peterborough game and first win since I think 2006 and, and possibly didn't deserve the win as much as some of the games earlier in the season, uh, the first few games. So, you know, that's what happens in football. Um, I think that momentum changed quite a bit, that Lincoln result and then the Peterborough result. And, and then when two good wins, again, a bit frustrated against Wickham. But, you know, we're, that, that's the... That's a good thing that we're frustrated that we didn't get a result against Wickham. You know, team that's been around the championship and top of the league for top of this league for for a while now. So, you know, we've we we feel we've we've had a go and and credit to John and and the coaching staff and the players for, you know, for 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 I think I think the good thing as well is I think the football is, is has been good. I think the fans the biggest the biggest compliment I think we're getting right now is the fans talking about. How good the football is, and and I think once we start putting the finishing article to it and, and knocking a few goals in, I think it will be it will be well, the results will keep coming. You know the tendencies have been fantastic so far this season. I think averaging over six eight, um, which is great, and that's testament to what what's going on on the pitch. Yeah, when when you make the step up a league, there's always a, a little bit of apprehension, I guess, at the start of the season. How will we get on? Will we belong? But actually. The, the results, the performances, the start of play, everything um, has, has looked good over the first few weeks. I think it's, yeah, I think it's good. I think it's been, it's been decent. I think there's room for improvement. I think John said it last week, there's room for improvement. And, uh, and I think everyone's working hard towards that. And uh, yeah, obviously still a little bit, I think the start of the season was uh, still affected by the injuries from last year. Um, and, and those, and how those affected us coming into pre-season and how you had to manage players back. And, uh, we, you know, we've still got a couple of players injured that, that are going to come back in. Sean's finding his feet again from, from injury and et cetera, et cetera. But overall, I think we've um, we've equipped ourselves well and no one's looking at us as though we're going to be an easy target. Summer transfer window closed last week, of course. Six new players arrived, some extended their contracts. How did you view the summer window as a whole from a chairman's point of view? I think again, I think it I think it was decent. I think we certainly improved. I think I think people were, yeah, you know, obviously a last day you don't sign anyone. You maybe maybe we wanted to get another forward in and et cetera, et cetera. But you know, we've got a certain budget. We've already increased the budget a couple of times throughout the window to bring in a couple of the Couple of the players, so um, you know, not by fortunes, but decent, you know, decent amounts. So you know, and and obviously, it's like anything else. We'd all, everyone would want a bit more. Everyone would want another player. Everyone would want, you know, that that that's that extra player. But it doesn't always work that way, and uh, we have to be realistic and and what we're putting into the club anyway. And 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 I think you know we've we've got a strong group and. You know, it's all it's all very well. Everyone talks about new players and this and that and signing players, and I understand it. And it's the same for all of us. That signing players is 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 exciting, and and that's what you know you really look for during a window, especially on the last day. Everyone likes a last day signing, whether they're good or not, doesn't really ever matter on that day. But we are can't forget the group we've got. We can't forget like. You can't forget who we have in the building. The players that have been successful for us over the last two years, and and uh, and the players that we've signed to longer contracts because we believe in them and we believe in their success. Um, you know, it's it's Sam is a perfect. You know, and, and and one of the things of the window, and people forget that you know when you turn down money and good money for players, it, it that shows a level of commitment anyway. Um, so and from the player and from 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 the club, so. You know, and people like Sammy and 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 getting those getting Sammy down tied down to a longer contract after what he's done and the demand for Sammy over this window was 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 I think it's something that we should be congratulated for. Yeah, the the market value of a player who scored nearly thirty goals in his last fifty four games 
uh, the League Two Player of the Year, etc., w- would have been huge. So to get Sam tied down is a is a sign of, or it's a compliment really to to the club and the culture and the fact that Sam's happy here. Yeah, no, Sam's done fantastic. You know, Sam is actually one of the one of the players or the only player that's been here longer than us. You know, Sam is actually was was in the building when we, when we first walked in and. And we've watched Sam grow and develop and support and 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 he's and he's gone through his challenges with the fans, especially over that period. But he's come out the other side and come out stronger. You know, there's not many kids that don't name Sammy as one of their favorite players. When you know, when I'm there on a match day and you ask the mascots or the kids you see who's your favorite player, it tends to be Sammy. And 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 you know, I've got a a friend of ours, lad, who comes to a few of the games and he's all, all over Sammy. He, he loves him. So, but it's not just, you know, it's all about, you're right, it's about the culture that's that's been developed over the club by John, by the staff, by everybody. It's, you know, people do want to be here. Uh, getting Mark back, getting Kieran back, you know, these are players that could have gone, I think we've seen with Mark, you know, and, and Kieran, they could have gone to, you know, bigger clubs as it were and et cetera, et cetera. So, they've, They've come back because they've enjoyed what that what happened last year, and they want to try and repeat some of the successes. Yeah, you touched on it there. That's a real positive: the fact that players like Mark Leonard and Kieran Bowie and their parent clubs in the Premier League are willing to allow them to come back to us. I know it does mean that their their value is a bit different this summer to last summer because of the success they've had. But the fact that they're willing to come back is is another good sign of the, of the culture at the club. Yeah, loan players, it's really interesting. The loan player market, I think I've talked about it before, has changed dramatically over the last sort of five, ten years. And, you know, and I think some of our fans still believe that loan players are the cheap option when they're, they're actually not, especially when with players, you know, on a first loan, you do tend to get players a bit cheaper than, than, than possibly you would be paying for them, you know, if they were your players. But then once, once they do well and they're successful, then you don't really tend to get those prices repeated. So, but, you know, as you've seen, Mark, Kieran, play, the lone players have, have contributed so far and, and will continue to contribute. So uh, um, they they fit, you know, they fit fit within the budget. Listen, I've said it from the start, you know, and, and I've said it and I'm not going to hide away from the fact that we don't have the biggest budget in the league and we, we you know, and, and we're not going to compete, um, you know, uh, even like, you know, you, I think you saw a bit of that Tuesday night with, with uh, against Oxford, you know, knowing what Oxford's budget is compared to ours, you would expect them to be a bit better than us in, in you know, in terms of some of the younger players and the players fighting to get in the first team. So, so you know, that's not to say we don't give it a go and we don't compete. And as you've seen, we have competed and we've competed with teams, you know, with much bigger budgets. And I think it's, uh, uh, but it's not all about budget. We've all, I've always said that it's not all about budget and. Uh, you know, it's not all about money. Um, so we we just have to we work with what we've got and and uh, we we crack on and and work hard. As custodians of the club, it's the age old quandary, isn't it, about being ambitious, supporting the first team squad as best you can, but also not doing anything that would jeopardise the club for current or future generations. And that's often a very very difficult balance to find. It's always a fine line because everybody wants that extra player. The manager always, the managers always do. And there's not a manager that I've ever worked with that has, that has not, not thought they were one player away from, from, from the finished squad. And then they tend to find that player sometimes. And then there's another player that's going to finish the squad, but that's, that's their job. Their job is to win football matches. And I, I, I would expect managers to push and push for players. That's, you know, that's part of, what they do because they want to get the best players on the pitch and uh, and and the reality is you know it's there's a there's a view that we're overly involved in the you know the recruitment of players etc and if we don't get a player it's, it's our fault etc it's not necessarily the case but you accept it because you are the leader of an organization but um it, it it's more about we set a budget and then part of the recruitment process or discussion but you know the final say, or you know, within the budget, always goes with with the manager at, at this club, and it always will. But but I think I think I think it's been proved. I think John has proved himself over and over again in windows, and with the help of Colin and the rest of the staff, you know, and James doing the contracts. I think that we've proved that we can compete and 
you know, and, and not not every deal is going to happen. Not every deal is not going to happen. It's just, you know, the, the one thing you know about football is that it's a moving moving vehicle, and and um, not everything goes exactly how you want and how it's planned. But overall, I think, uh, you know, I think we're, we're we're in a decent place. Just a final one bit before we we move on to talk about other things. I think it's the first time in my memory I can remember any summer where we've kept every player we wanted to keep. Most summers you offer contracts and one or two players move on or whatever. But this summer, I think every player we've wanted to keep has stayed. So again, that underlines that players do enjoy playing here. Yeah, definitely. I think I think probably I think probably Kingy was the one that that. We did offer something too, and he, and he, but you know, the, the kid went to uh, did fantastic for us, and you know, got a very good contract at Wall. So you know, it's, it's, that's a little bit different than going down the road uh, somewhere, or you know, going into League Two or whatever. He, the kid did well, and we we're really pleased for him. And he's a great kid, um, did fantastic well, was wonderful, wonderful in the you know in the dressing room around the club during his time here. Um, so, but overall, yeah, no, I think one of the things we did talk about was the consistency and and we have talked about it and and you know and, and it's always good to to have that at a football club we went through a period where we didn't have as much consistency and um and uh, and it was a bit up and down but hopefully now we we can we can we can get that and and push that forward you spoke there about the players enjoying it. I think that the fans are enjoying it. The attendance, the average attendance after the first four home league games, just under 7,000, some big crowds in there, some great atmospheres. And, you know, the, the, you touched on the style of football earlier. It, it seems to be a good place, a happy place to be at the moment, six fields on a match day. Yeah, no, the match days, I think, have been great. I think uh, I think you saw it a little bit. Uh, I think what surprised me, and, and, and results always very very important they're the most important thing in my mind they always have been but results always um dictate feel dictate feelings and and been doing this a long time we know that when you lose everything's bad when you win everything's good but seeing saying that i think even with a couple of the losses and even the lincoln draw you looked at that and you said actually Fans walked away, rel- did not overly complaining, relatively happy, and and felt the st- the football was there, the effort was there. And then obviously you come to Peterborough, and you know, and you get that result, and fans are ecstatic. And and I think that's you know that's what we do a lot of this for, isn't it? Really, you know, for that feeling of walking away from that game and and that buzz and and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's about trying to replicate that as much as possible. And I, and I think. Most of the most listen. You're never gonna never gonna please every fan, and 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 there's you know there's some fans that are probably even if the club was winning the you know the you know the um the Premier League with there there would be problems, but but the reality is I think the majority of fans are happy, and and everyone says people vote with their feet, and and, and that's what seems to happen, and and right now attendances are are up, and and we've done we're doing all right, so. Yeah, we're pretty positive about going forward, and we'll, as I said, you know, I think we did a Q and A session. I said we'll definitely win. We won't win as many games as last year, but we'll win some games, and we'll have a we'll have an exciting season. Some changes: fans attending games at Six Fields will will see Kelvin. The new big screens up and working, of course, and also the new five side community pitch going in behind the stadium. Yeah, no, I think the the big screens are pretty impressive. I think both both screens are, look good actually. Um, you know, it's and it's important. You know, it brings in revenue to the club, and and the advertising is good, and 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 it gives a better experience. And kind of miss the little green square a little bit on the old screen, but but you know, it's still. I think there's still a little bit of work to go on it, and uh, and uh, and I think all the parts are in or get almost there, so we should be able to crack on with that. But no, it's good that the screen that was never going to get done got done. So we're um, we're pretty pleased about that. I think the fans are. The feedback's been great, and you know, having some video on there, and you know, it's been good. And and to me, the pitch is the pitch behind the north stand is fantastic. You know, that's that's testament to what we do as a club, what our community trust does, what we do together. Um, you know, everyone was involved in that project, and everybody at the football club gets, you know, gets to 
you know, see that and see the reward for that and enjoy the, you know, the, and and know that, the, that 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 is going to be a community asset. Um, and we're really pleased. You know, we were pleased to help get the plan in on the on the pitch. We were pleased to, you know, see it going in, and and uh, and some of our fans have uh, been helpful in in helping prepare the site and and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's a real community effort, and we should be, you know, as a club and as a trust and as a as a fan base, we should be applauded for it because it's going to be great that there. It's going to be great to see the see kids out there playing on it and uh, every match day and off, you know, during the week and et cetera, et cetera. It's really good. should be something that's absolutely applauded. Work also going on at the training ground and um, the, the building, the club's first ever training centre building. Um, builders are in there, hopefully with the first team ready to move in in the next few weeks. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, be, be careful saying a few weeks with Martin, the, the <laughs> builder, because, you know, he's... He, he doesn't like to give dates, but yeah, no, we're 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 close on that. And uh, I know James popped up there yesterday. He told me, and he said there's some good progress, and and he was pleased. So, so hopefully we'll get to see that. And uh, I would say probably at the start of October, maybe. And uh, and I think you know the players and John are excited to do it. And you know the training environment is good. You know the reality is, if anyone's ever been up there, the the pitches are good. The training environment is good. The atmosphere is excellent, and and this will just add to it. This will add to it as a base, and 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 it's a it's, it's a proud moment. You know, it's a proud moment to think a club of the history of of, of Northampton, and and to say this is the first sort of real training base. Like we, like we think we've made advancements anyway, just having actual training pitches because we remember what it was like when we took over. So. You know, but these these are the sort of things that are expected of of a club. But you know, to be able to provide it is 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 fantastic. And you know, again, testament to James. And James has worked very hard on this. And there's been some setbacks along the way. And it's not the easiest thing to do to negotiate these type of deals. But he's he's done a fantastic job. Yeah, I think you can be sure that the likes of Brighton and Fulham wouldn't be reloaning their players back out to us if the training environment wasn't of the standard they felt was w- required. Yeah, absolutely. If, you know, if Kieran and Mark gone back and said we're, we're we're training on the park across the road, you know, like possibly, you know, a few years ago, like I think, I think if I remember, it was it was the Coventry Cup game uh, before we took over. Which and Chris, I was talking to Chris at the time, and he told me that they'd trained on the park across the road just beforehand. And um, even though, to fairness, they went and won that game, if I recall. So maybe that's the maybe that's the, that's the idea. But um, but no, it's it's uh, it's a good environment. It's a good setup, and uh, we're ha- we're pleased. We you know our partners, Moulton. We're, we're you know we've been partners with Moulton for a long time, and and it's a good college, and and they're really good people up there. So we're excited to expand on that partnership. Just the latest on the East End, Kelvin. The latest situation with the council. Uh, yeah, making progress. Uh, the lawyers are working on the documents as we speak, or hopefully they are. Um, I've got a meeting in, I think, a Zoom meeting next week on Tuesday, I think, with uh, with the council to to go over some of the, the legal points. Um, and you know, it's it's a complicated it's a complicated process. You know, there are a lot of leases. Uh, there's a lot of transfer of documentation, and anyone with any with the with a lot of the experience of these kind of deals will know it's you know it's not a, a short term thing. But we're we're all pushing to get it done. Both the council and ourselves are pushing to get it done. We've had some obviously most people saw the news about Buckingham's, which we which we uh, put out a statement at the time. So you know we we are we're in discussions with with some other builders and. And now that it's probably been confirmed that Buckingham's aren't, you know, to any longer in terms of their sports stadium division, we are, we, you know, we we're pretty comfortable in that position. So, you know, timing wise, it's hard to put a time on it because it is a legal process, and 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 it, we're not fully in control of it because it's really with the lawyers. Um, and I and you know, and I go back to the, I go back to the if I if I recall. You know, in the count in the cabinet papers, it said you know, six to nine months for to complete the the disposal, as it was what the council called it, disposal of land, and that would have been from when you know the JR decision came down. So, but we will do it. It'll be done much quicker than that. But they, you know, that should we. I don't want to 
you know, think it's, we shouldn't be thinking it's going to be done in a matter of days or weeks, but it's going to take take its time. But we'll do it right and we'll make sure we do it. And and it, we've kind of got a, 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 an idea of a time scale in terms of the build, um, but we're just waiting for a few things to firm up before we um, before we go forward with publishing that kind of stuff. A few other subjects just to touch upon with you. Um, looking to have a fans forum towards the end of this month. Yeah, I think there's. I think we've got a date as well. I think something like the twenty eighth of September, um, and I think it will be. I think we'll do it. Um, I think you said that the podcast guys would might might host it again, um, which is you know, and 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 I think it will be just a pretty low key sort of come and ask questions and and you know, and uh, and you know whatever topics people want to talk about. You know, we've been doing this for seven, eight years now, and we've done them every year. So I think people know the format and come and ask whatever you think and and uh, we'll be as open as we can. A couple of other things just to touch on with you briefly. Um, new appointment to the medical department this year. Now, obviously the injuries at the back end of last year that the squad and John and Colin did so well to overcome, but a lot of sort of thought and uh, has gone into that over the summer and strengthens the, the medical and strength and conditioning departments. And... Um, an, an important appointment as we work to try and keep the squad as fit and as available as possible for the for this season. Yeah, no, there was a lot of work over the summer and, and not even just over the summer, the end of last season. Um, it, it's it's very difficult when your players aren't available. And, and we looked at a lot of the stuff, you know, in terms of why players get injured, why did they get injured more at the end of the season in terms of, you know, and there seemed to be a big number that st started to get injured, and and there was a lot of reasons for it. Listen, we we we, I think we were a bit unlucky with a couple of players, and then I think we, you know, because of the situation and going for promotion, and 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 players probably came back a bit too soon, even in their minds or our minds or the medical department's minds. But it was a necessity. It wasn't necessarily a, it was a risk, and and I think. In in a in a way, some of the risks sort of paid off with the promotion, um, and some of the players, you know, like Sam Sherry, for example, came back a bit too early, but he, he you know, he he managed to finish the season very strongly. Uh, young Max was pretty much the same; came back maybe a bit too early, but you know, again, he was very influential at the end of the season, part of the you know the the team that that took us up, but you know, it didn't work out for others, and you know. Jack's poor Jack came in and probably jumped in a bit too early, but he was playing at centre back and and doing a great job, and his hamstring pinged again. So, but you know we've looked at all of that stuff and and um, and uh, taken advice and and so adding staff, I think we've added Joe and to to you know work alongside Ash in terms of the rehab as well. That's important. Um, or well, not added Joe. Joe was part of the team last year, but we you know made him full time, and and then uh, you know adding um, Ethan to the Ethan into the mix will only help Michael and hopefully improve the position. Coming up in the next couple of months, we'll come to the end of the um, two-year period for the supporters' elected representative. How have you? How do you feel that that role has gone over the last couple of years? I think it's been good. I think. Uh, I think we've only received compliments from outside the club. We've received a lot of compliments, especially from some of the, you know, the supporter led uh, clubs. Like, you know, I know, I know people at Exeter very well and, and uh, they talk about it. They've, I, they've talked about it to me. And, and, and I think people have appreciated that it's been a, it's a, it's a truly democratic process in terms of who gets picked. Um, and I think, you know, and, uh, I think that's good. We've actually, I've actually spoken about it with the football league and and uh, as part of some of the um, the white paper stuff and the which I think more will come out of in the next couple of days in terms of the government led initiatives, etc. So we, I think it's been a it's been a real positive. I think the 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 it, it, you know, it's like anything else. You know, it's uh, sometimes fans look at it and think they're going to get an update every day from Tom or whoever that person is. But but really, the work with Tom really, as, what's impressed me is the fact that the amount of people that Tom talks to, 
you know, and and the feedback we get for as a club, and 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 I have to say, I think our engagement as a club is as high as it has been in in years, uh, maybe of all time. I don't know, but the engagement is is fantastic, and and that's to do with the fact that Tom's out there talking to fans on a on a daily basis. You know, whether it be on a match day, home and away, because obviously Tom travels to most of the games. But he, you know, Tom's been good. I think he. He's done it well. He travels on different buses. He goes different ways. He talks to different groups, and he's a well-respected member of the fan base. Um, so, and I think you know, and I think it, it, it's it's I think forgetting about Tom as a as an individual, I think it's been a a great uh, decision. I think it's been a great thing to have to have that link between the board and and the fans. Um, has been good and Tom's been, you know, Tom and that position has helped us shape some of our decision making as we've as we've gone forward. Um, and I think that, you know, looking into the future, I think um I think we'd run the similar sort of process as we did as we did, you know, two years ago, which was, you know, I think was people will apply. I think, you know, I think you're gonna you're probably gonna, you know, put it out there at some point of, of what that process is and and uh, so it'll be good to see, you know, I think Tom, I think Tom can run again. I think that's what we decided. So if he wanted to, he can, or if somebody else wants to have a go and we will welcome anyone onto the, onto the board, obviously, if they have to pass the EFL test. But uh, apart from that, it, it'll be, it'll be good. I think the position, no matter who it is, I think the position is good. I think the fact that we have a supporters representative on the board that's been, uh, democratically elected by the fan base is is important. So you know, I don't as as before. I don't want to get too involved in it. I think the I think Tom's been great, you know. But I think the position is is the key, and it's not just the individual. So um, I've enjoyed working and getting to know Tom a bit more, and uh, um, and been impressed with the way that he's he's, he's he talks to the fan base and uh, um, and he, you know we even, we get questions a lot. You know, Tom will always you know. Every week we get a, a, a question into our WhatsApp group, as you'll know, Gareth, which says, you know, this is a fan approached me about this. What do we think? Even from fans that really don't like us, you know, um, you know, but Tom's always willing to respond and, and, and engage and ask the question. So it's been it's been good. So, um, you know, we look we look forward to that continuing in terms of the position. And if, you know, if Tom's successful, great. If he's not. And someone else comes in. I'm sure Tom will be supportive of that, and and we, we we move forward as a club. Yeah, we'll announce more details on that that progress that process. Sorry, in the next couple of weeks. Just finally, then, Kelvin, a month into the new season, it feels like the club's in a in a decent place on and off the pitch. I think so. I think we are. I think we're, you know, it, it, we thought we knew League One would be a challenge, but I think we faced it quite well. Uh, we knew the budgets would be a challenge, but again, we've, we're doing our best on that, and we we you know we're trying to bring players in that, that that can compete and 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 we've shown in these first few games that we can um and we look forward to continuing it's you know it's always it's actually quite quite nice to have a little break here coming up this weekend cuz take a bit of a breather cuz the start of the season is always you know very intense but but I think we you know we we're, we're now, we'll, we'll get ourselves ready to to face Port Vale and in in our, in the next game and 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 John and and Colin are, and and the team there, Mark and the team, are, you'll get the players ready, and the players will will face the, you know, will will face what comes.